Good morning, everybody. Oh, you guys sound you guys sound like awake. That's pretty sick. Good morning. How was my week? Busy. You're right, I don't. <laughs> but we are on week four of our series alone together. Who's been here for the other three weeks? Okay. So most of you guys, that's good. So let me let me give you a quick recap. So Alone Together is our series about dating and relationships, okay? Now <laughs> Stop making dumb noises over there. <laughs> he's fixing the computer. Don't worry about him. Pretend he's not there, okay? First week, we talked about intentional dating. And this is the whole thought, if you don't remember this, where we just said that dating is fun, and that's important. But on the other side of this, the whole point of it is to find out who we're marrying. So we shouldn't take that lightly. We should make serious decisions with that knowledge. And then the second week, we went in and we talked about love, and we learned that, yes, as much as it's a feeling, it also becomes a choice that you have to make. And last week, we talked about sex, and it went pretty well, I, I have to say. I'm pretty proud of myself. And we talked about why it is important, but why it is also important to wait for when you're supposed to do it. And this week, we're bringing it all to a head. Because it's gotten progressively heavier. So we started with dating, and it's like, okay. Then we move up a level. We talk about love. Okay, move it up a level, talk about sex. What could we talk possibly be talking about this morning? We're going to be talking about what happens if you don't have any of that. We're talking about loneliness. <laughs> that, that was really sad. <laughs> it was just everyone in the room was like, <sighs> so I want to talk about possibly one of the loneliest times in my life. So when I was, so summer of 2018, this is the summer I graduated high school, was possibly one of the best parts of my entire life. Would you stop talking? <laughs> stop knocking your boots on my thing, on my stage. Okay, this is the part of my life that was really awesome. Like I was I was dating a girl who I was absolutely in love with, all my best friends in the world. I was hanging out with all day every day. When you turn 18 and you graduate, that summer you have all the perks of being an adult, but none of the responsibility of being an adult. And so we would go on road trips every other weekend. I went to like six concerts that summer. It was fantastic. However, there was a point where summer ended. And I had to go to school, and all of a sudden I'm in college, and the bank account that was once full was very, very empty. And I hated my job, and all my friends that I had spent weeks and weeks and even months with growing relationships were now states away. And I was not a fan of my college experience, and then a couple semesters in, that girlfriend and I broke up. And I remember, no, because... There's a point where when all this comes together at once, you feel like you have absolutely nothing. And that was one of the lowest points in my entire life. Like, I was angry about it. I was straight up, like, actually legitimately depressed. Like, I was unhappy every day. And now I'm an, I'm an introvert. You guys know this. I don't keep this a secret. So I'm like more than capable and I have a lot of experience being alone. It's actually how I need to recharge. But there's something that you learn when you're alone for too long is that being alone and being lonely are two very different things. Can we agree? There's actually, so some of you will care about this, some of you won't, but there's actually this, this little short piece from a poem that I found on Instagram <laughs> and I think that it encapsulates it perfectly, and it goes like this. It's by this girl named Hannah Nelson, and it says, I like drinking coffee alone and reading alone. I like riding the bus alone and walking home alone. It gives me time to think and set my mind free. I like eating alone and listening to music alone, but when I see a mother with her child, a girl with her lover, or a best friend laughing with a friend, I realize that even though I love being alone, I do not fancy being lonely. And now I'm not going to, I'm going to assume, I'm going to hope that you guys don't feel like this. But I also am aware that this is a real thing. 
And I'm sure that you all have been here at some point. When you get to this point, you start to just sink deeper and deeper. And it gets harder and harder to look at things in a good light. And that's just not good. And now we're looking at this, we're looking at loneliness right now through a lens of relationship. And so lots of us think, lots of us think we're so sick of being alone, we're so sick of being single that if we just had a boyfriend or a girlfriend, we'd feel better, right? Because then at the very least, it's like, you know, you know, at least I'd have one friend that I could count on and talk to every day. But that's not how that works. See, I, there, there's this pastor I love named Michael Todd, and he, he said it like this. He says, we're sick of ourselves. We're sick of being alone. And if you get into a relationship haphazardly because you're tired of being alone, and you get into a relationship with someone else who gets in a relationship with you because they're tired alone, you're just in a relationship being sick together. And that's when bad things happen. Because let's think about it. Because it might feel good for the first couple weeks, first couple months, but when that honeymoon stage ends and you're back where you left, but now you've got someone else to worry about, you start making dumb decisions. Because you think, well... And I hope that you guys aren't here yet, but you start thinking, well, you know, maybe if if only if we were married, I would kind of, we would rekindle the joy we had when we first met. Or if we had a kid, maybe it would bring us together. I know, but you will be eventually. (laughs) I know. Stick with me here. You know what I'm trying to say. It's dangerous when you get into a relationship when you know you're not ready for one. And I'm going to take you, this is going to be maybe a jarring transition, but I'm going to take you right into Mark right now, okay? So this is in the Bible where someone is asking Jesus, he goes, what's the most important commandment? And he says this, he says, the most important, Israel, is that the Lord our God is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. And you're like, okay, obviously. And the disciples hearing this are like, okay, that's easy. We love you. And he's like, wait. He says, the second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no greater commandment than these. You see, they asked for the greatest, and he gave them two. He's not saying one and two. He's basically saying one A and one B. Love your neighbor as yourself. Now, this is something that I don't know how often you guys hear it, but I've heard it so often that it kind of lost meaning to me for a while. And even writing this message, I was like, is that true? And I was like, yeah, it is. You cannot love somebody if you do not love yourself. It's plain and simple. And it's kind of a cliche, but it's true. How can you expect to go into a relationship and be able to love someone if you don't even love yourself? How can you be happy with somebody else if you can't be happy with just yourself? So here arises a new question. How do we start loving ourselves? Now at this point, I actually, so I actually had to rewrite this message I had it completely written, and then on Friday night, I rewrote the entire thing because God was like, no, nope, you're doing this instead. Because I was actually worried. At this point in the message, I was like, uh, this is going to be way more of a self-help message than it is anything about Jesus. And then he pointed something out to me. Do you guys realize, because I never thought about this, do you guys realize how much overlap there is between loving Jesus and loving yourself? Like, let's think about this for a second. So following Jesus, one of the biggest things he teaches, like one of the primary things in Christianity, teaches us to let go of our past, lay our burdens, our shame down because he forgave us, and then repent and try and do better. What is self-love other than forgiving yourself and then trying to do better? They're the same thing. So blah, blah, blah. Jesus is the answer. 
We get it, Joey. This is a church. But this is what I'm getting at. Is in, is in our culture, we hear the term self-love and self-care all the time. Do we agree? I've had a lot, of, a lot of friends of mine go through breakups recently. You know what I hear every single time? Oh, well, I'm just going to work on myself for a bit. What does that look like? Can I, okay, can I ask a question? Who in here has said that sentence? Okay, a pretty good amount of us. <laughs> what does that actually look like? Realistically, actually. Because I, because I was thinking about it, and if I'm not literally working, if I'm not focusing on my job, and I'm not focusing on music, which is the other thing I want to do, you know what my days look like? Exactly. I wake up late because I got no reason not to. The first thing I do is open up my phone. If, you're, if you like YouTube like I do, I instantly open up YouTube, but maybe you open up TikTok or Instagram and you're watching a video and then maybe you make breakfast. Maybe. But you're watching your phone the entire time. You go take a shower. Mike is like, oh, but you go to the gym, Joey. Dude, I'm still just listening to music. I'm just distracting myself. And it's this cycle the entire day, and the day ends, and I'm like, man, I didn't do anything today. <laughs> exactly, exactly, because relaxing is important, right? But that's not relaxing. We're like, oh, yeah, I'm going to take the time. We literally say, I'm going to do better. We take the time to better ourselves, and what do we do with it? We distract ourselves. And we indulge ourselves. So I have a new angle to show you. What if loneliness is nothing more than being unhappy with where we are? With what we are doing? There's a song that I'm in love with right now. It's called Liberation. And there's a line where she's talking about her life. And she goes, I am trying. And then she pauses and she goes... I'm lying. Are you guys actually trying right now? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's true. When I, so when I was in that point in college, people would be like, so Joey, what are you up to? I'm like, oh, school. Well, like, you're, you want to do music, right? Like, you're working on music? I'm like, oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> I was not, <laughs> and I would tell people I was, and here's the thing, because I think we all have something like this, is I was thinking about it, I constantly wanted to be doing it, and I would say only, if only I wasn't at work, I'd be working on music right now. If only I wasn't like, I didn't stay up late last night, I would have had time this morning when I slept in to, to work on this thing. But I wouldn't have done it. And looking back at it, if I had been, because looking at it from the standard right now where I am working on it, and I am doing it, I would have been so much happier if I just committed to the thing that I wanted to do. Are you guys actually pursuing a relationship with Jesus, or are you just coming to church on Sunday? A lot of you guys actually have an idea of what you want to do for a job when you're older. Maybe you go to college. Maybe you want to do graphic design or business. Have you actually looked at those things online or are you just hoping it'll work? I know guys in college that went for the same thing I did, sound engineering that's recording music. First day in class, 90% of the kids in my class had never even opened recording software. You just spent 30 grand. Are you practicing self-love or are you justifying to spending money on coffee because you had a bad day? <laughs> Gabby is crying back there. <laughs> There's this thing that Pastor John and I talk about a lot, and it's this dichotomy of who Jesus is. Because on one hand, you are saved by grace alone and faith alone, correct? Yes. yes. But on the other hand... He also says you're saved when you do good works, correct? 
okay, so are, am I saved by grace alone and faith alone, or do I have to work to be saved? Yes. Cut the peanut gallery a little bit. Life will go on if you let it go on. But you cannot go on thinking your life is going to get better if you're not doing anything to try and make it better. Yeah, you can be a Christian and you can be saved just by believing in God. Totally true. You're going to be a lot better off if you do what he asks you to do. The same thing is going on with every other thing in your life. Now, I know for a fact, bro, and I, I'm i sorry, man. I know a lot of you guys are actually going through this right now. I know a lot of you guys are in that loneliness period. And I'm sorry, dude. That straight up sucks. I once saw this thing that said, loneliness isn't not having anybody. It's feeling like nobody has you. And when I was in that period of my life, I was still praying, and one day I was fed up with God, and I was praying, and I was like, why is everything happening like this? And he convicted me. He said, Joey, nobody may have your back, but you don't have your back either. What are you doing? So I know this is kind of a downer, but I want to encourage you. If you're in that spot right now, if you're single and unhappy about it, if you're lonely, this doesn't have to be a dating thing, by the way. Maybe you just feel like you don't have that many friends. Same thing. This is not a time to lay down and die. It's not a time to let yourself sink down. This is a time to rise up. I know that sounds cliche, but it's true. Because when God puts us in these places, and he does put us in these places, and he lets us stay in these places. It's for a reason. It's so that we can learn something. And maybe it's something about him or something about ourselves or something about our world. But he wants us to figure something out. A lot of you want to find the one right this moment, me included. But I promise you that whoever that is has a lot more to go before they are ready for you. And that goes both ways. Look at yourself honestly. Do you think you could love your future husband or wife right now with who you are? Or do you think you'd fall short in some crazy ways? This is a time to grow. This is a time to change something. Have a little hope, yeah? All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I feel like some of those words came out of my mouth and I barely even knew what I was saying. But I know you're here, God, and I know that you're in it. I pray that as we bring this series to a close that the message would not be lost on the students, God, that they would know that there is more to what they are going through than just sadness. That there is reason for the pain and God, whether they're dating someone or they're not, or if they're even interested in dating right now, I pray that they would take the time and they would look at themselves and they would say, what can I do better? God, I pray for all the future husbands and wives of these students that they would be ready for them when they meet them. And that they would just fall head over heels in love, God. We love you so very much. And the whole church said...